Hi, I'm Charles, and this is the fourth episode of Generation X at Night. So today we're going to be looking at a map of the world, and we're going to do some geography. Geography is really important because it defines borders, it influences what a nation can do in terms of trade, in terms of exports, how much it can grow. It also influences borders for defense, many factors. So geography is really important. What we're looking at here is the Peter's projection map. Now, it may look a little funny to you, but the reason for that is that the typical Mercator map was developed by Gerardus Mercator, who was a 16th century German explorer. And what he did was he put the equator, he put the equator way down here, way low, only about a quarter of the full map. So it, it's a Eurocentric bias that puts the poor countries of Africa and South America and Australia way down low. That's what Peters put them, Mercator, sorry, put them right around here. Then in the 20th century, Arno Peters, who was a German historian, came along and said, you know what, why would we put the equator all the way down there? That's not fair. What we should do is put the equator right in the middle of the map. And so the equator runs through Ecuador, Democratic Republic of Congo, and Indonesia. So Arno Peters really wanted to show a map that was representing the true borders and equal area of the, of the world, as opposed to a Eurocentric bias. So now if we look here, let's see what we got. Asia is the largest largest continent in the world, followed by Africa, which is the second largest continent. The third largest continent is North America, and the fourth largest continent is South America. So as you can see, Africa is really big here. It's the second largest continent. Now, if you look at Africa on the traditional Western Mercator map, it looks pretty small. It looks like only about half of Asia, when in reality, it's about three quarters. Another interesting thing, if you look at Greenland up here, in the traditional Mercator map, Greenland is, is drawn up as if it's a huge landmass, way bigger than Australia, almost as big as South America. But if we look up here, Greenland is actually fairly small. And what's interesting is that Greenland is about 800,000 square kilometers, and Algeria in Africa, which is obviously a poor developing country, got a raw deal because Algeria, Algeria is 900,000 square miles. So it's bigger than Greenland. But in the Mercator map, Greenland is massive, and Algeria is just a tiny little speck in Africa. So that's another bias. Now, if you look at Africa, Algeria is the largest country in the world. The second largest country in the world is Sudan, and the third largest country in the world is the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is interesting. Each country is about a million square miles. Now, up here, Russia is the largest country in the world. Russia is the largest country in the world at about 6,000 square kilometers. The next largest country is Canada at about 4,000 square kilometers. The next country is the United States. But the interesting thing here is that the U.S., Brazil, China, and Australia are all around 3,000 square kilometers. So those four are about average. And if you take the top five countries of Russia, the, Un the United States, Canada, Brazil, and China, and Australia, that covers 49% of the Earth's total surface. So there's a lot of land mass in those five countries. Now, if you think about population, China is the biggest country in the world at 1.4 billion people. Second is India at 1 billion people. So one third of the world lives right in this east and south and east and southern Asian portion of Asia. About one third of the world is either Chinese or Indian, which I always found absolutely fascinating. Now, another thing I wanna do is talk about um, the equator, which I mentioned, runs through Colombia, DRC, and Indonesia. Indonesia right here has 250 million people. It's the fourth largest continent, fourth largest country in the world, which is also fascinating. Now, there's a huge drop-off. Australia, China, the U.S., and Brazil, all around 300, 3, 3 million square miles. Then there's a huge drop-off to India at 1.2 million square miles. So even though India is the second largest country in the world, it's actually only the seventh largest in size. In population, it's the second largest. What else do we have here? Let's look at some countries that, that are in the news. Why not? So Iran, for example, not a huge country, but not a small country, has 80 million people. Now if we look at Turkey, Turkey is even smaller. It also has around 80 million people. Russia, which is massive and is the largest country in the world, has about 140 million people, but it's actually going down.
because they're having population loss, the birth rate is very low, and the economy is struggling. So Russia is 140 million. After that, you've got Germany. You can see how small Germany is. It's about 600, 500, 400 square miles. Germany has 80 million people. So there's 80 million Germans. But that is also the population of birth rate is going down. So Germany is struggling. France has about 60 million. Spain has 40 million. And then over here, if you look here, Canada has about 30 million people only, but it's the second largest country in the world in terms of area. So all this northern part of Canada is absolutely uninhabited, except for a few settlements around here and there. Canada is larger than China, yet China has 1.4 billion. Canada has 30 million. So it's absolutely crazy how much open land there is in Canada compared to China, which has the most people in the world. Japan over here has 125 million people. It's about number nine or 10, which is interesting. And then uh, let's see what else that I want to talk about. Um, Africa as a whole, which I mentioned, is way bigger than Greenland. And I want to point out a couple of places that I've been to that are also relative, relevant for this. So in Africa, Nigeria in West Africa is the largest country of the, in Africa at about 190 million people. So 190 million people. The entire continent of Africa has about a billion people, one billion people. Asia has about three billion people. North America has about maybe 380 million people. South America has about 450 million people. So it's interesting to just, the main thing I wanted to get across here basically when you look at this map is that the equator is actually down here. Africa is in the center of the world. Asia is the biggest continent. Russia is massive. Greenland is smaller than Algeria. And basically what that means is that the developing countries, this whole part of South America, Africa, Indonesia was given short shrift by Mercator when he developed his map in the 17th century. Because as you can see here, all you have, everything is in the north and all you have is a little bit of Africa, most of South America and Australia in the Southern Hemisphere. So Arno Peters wanted the map to represent the true equal areas of the United States and the world. So if you look at it, for example, in South America, South America looks way, way, way smaller than North America. But in reality, Brazil is just as big as the United States. So I found that fascinating. Anyway, that's mostly what I wanted to tell you today. Just give you a little sense of how the Mercator map, which is the map that you see, which most institutions, organizations, countries, the UN use, that's the typical representation of the world right here. At this Peter's projection map, you have the true equal area representations of the world. So I hope you learned something today. That's it for Generation X at Night. I'm Charles, and I'm out.